Fred, the question of is there life outside of Earth, uh, alien uh, life, uh, either vegetation or intelligence is obviously one of the big questions of humanity. It's been asked for millennia. Um, as a cosmologist and as we learn so much about the structure of the universe and all the exoplanets we know, uh, what, what, what can we say with any increasing confidence about the likelihood of life outside of Earth? Well, the last couple decades have shown us a wealth of new information about the planet part of that question. So we now know that there are many Earth-sized planets. We know that there are many planets in general. And we know that many of those planets are in the right place in their solar system to have liquid water on the surface, if there's liquid water. Mm. So the astronomical part of the equation is actually very well in hand. We know there's lots of planets. We know there's lots of environment that could harbor liquid water and are the right size and so on. So that part's good. The next step is to see whether or not there's enough water that can be delivered to these so-called habitable planets. And that's actually an accessible question. The next step after that is to actually understand... How is that accessible? Let's start with that. Oh, well, because in the relatively near future, not next year, but maybe next decade, and that's optimistic, we'll be able to see probes of atmospheres of planets and other solar systems. Oh. Remarkably, we can already do that for a couple hot Jupiters. These are big Jovian mass planets close to their stars. We can watch the starlight shine through the rim of as the it, atmosphere. As it transits. As it transits, as it starts at transit. And we can get at this point very limited but some information about what the atmosphere is like as we go further we will be able to do that better for jovian planets and the ultimate goal is to do it for more rocky earth-like planets and if we can do that we can see the atmospheric content there are certain signatures that might indicate life so we can understand the astronomical aspects of your question quite okay. well okay. what we cannot do at the moment is we cannot figure out what are the basic requirements given a certain amount of chemistry and physical environment, what are the requirements to make life? And I'd like to make one um, important distinction. In the physical world, for the kinds of things like stars and planets, we have equations. We know the equations of stellar structure, and we even know how to solve them. We can solve them without better, better accuracy, but we know where to start. If you're asking, how do I build an organism? <clears throat> how do I build an ant? We do not have equations for an ant. And that's a key difference between <clears throat> doing astrophysical <clears throat> things and doing biological things. Okay, um, and so uh, <clears throat> let's, let's divide the question of life in the cosmos into two parts then. One are the physical parameters. Uh, and I think what we're saying that over these uh, last decades where cosmology has become more precision science, remarkably. Yeah, not uh, just cosmology, but all of astronomy. All of astronomy, yeah. fair. Uh, that the likelihood of there being the conditions that life had ha, have, have gone up. Yes, and we were hoping that would be the case, and now we can actually argue from data that that is the case. Right, and, but the next part of the question is from the, the raw chemical materials, even water, yeah. uh, what are the biological processes which life first arises and then evolves? Those are to a total different order of magnitude of kinds of questions. Yeah, they're an order of magnitude or bore harder. Yeah. Now, we would hope that we could make some progress on those questions in the lab, but that's a question for a biologist and not right. for me. <laughs> right. What, what are some of the other um, uh, astronomical questions that you could ask that could uh, affect that? Uh, for example, um, uh, how about the uh, stability of uh, planetary systems and the... Uh, the security that they would have from roving planets or comets or space junk that would be uh, disruptive. Okay, so many, many researchers are studying that question, namely how do dynamical events, passing stars, planets within the solar system, debris within the solar system, debris from outside the solar system, gamma ray bursts from outside the solar system, all of those disruptive events, people are studying how they can impact planets. Mm. And I would say that to wrap it up in a, a single sentence, the impact of all those things are moderate. They're important enough that they're interesting to study and they will happen sometimes and we can calculate the probability of them happening, but they're not definitive in the sense that they are devastating and will kill all the life on all the planets. <laughs> they're just one more thing we have to take into account, right? And so from a, a, an astronomer's point of view, 
uh, you're giving a, a green light, uh, it sounds, uh, to at least the explorations, the continuing explorations by biologists of what it takes for, to have life beyond Earth. Oh, no, I, I'm very much in favor of that.